So the Sahara Desert is so big that it covers 8% of the world's territory. It's bigger than the USA or China. Surprisingly, the Sahara is not the largest desert in the world. It is the third largest, behind Antarctica and the Arctic. But it is definitely the hottest one. Temperatures there reach 136 degrees Fahrenheit. This place has some of the most incredible sand dunes you've ever seen, towering up to 1,476 feet. But here's the kicker. There's a real risk that these dunes might continue to spread until they cover the entire world. Surprisingly, the influence of the Sahara Desert extends far beyond its borders. Its dust, carried by powerful winds, makes its way to the UK and across the European continent, particularly in winter. This dust, settling on the ground where it rains, is a familiar sight to those in the UK, often leaving a red residue on cars. This connection between the Sahara, England, and Europe serves as a stark reminder of the global reach of environmental phenomena. You might think this is not a big deal, but it could turn Europe into a desert, leaving its soil infertile and Europeans with no food. Soil is a fundamental aspect of human existence, just as crucial as clean water and air. Without it, we're left with nothing but a bleak and barren landscape. The Sahara Desert has already made its jump across the Mediterranean Sea, which is concerning and could change the landscape forever. One-fifth of Spain has already turned into a desert. The next victim is Italy, which also faces the problem of desertification. In fact, almost all European countries have the same issue. According to an expert, the land that has not changed for nearly 2,000 years will become mostly rock, and people living on this land will be gone. 60% of the soil in Moldova is gone, and the problem has expanded beyond the Black Sea. It has reached China and Mongolia, thousands of miles away from the Sahara Desert. All of this causes losses of $4 billion a year. The threat is so significant that even the UN has gathered the necessary resources to solve the problem as soon as possible. Italy is sending help to Africa to stop the Sahara Desert from expanding. If this process does not stop in the next 10 years, millions will be forced to leave their homes. The Sahara Desert is growing for approximately 30 miles per decade. You do the math and see how long it will take to cover Europe. Since 1920, the Sahara has expanded by around 10%. But not all hope is lost because more than 172 countries have joined to put a stop to the desertification of the world. The World Food Program is a project that aims to help bring back green land that was once present in the Sahara. When they told people who called the Sahara home what they were about to do, the latter basically laughed in their faces and said it was impossible. But when you have a specific goal in mind, the impossible becomes possible. If we traveled back around 5,000 years into the past, we would see a beautiful forest with lush green trees and grass. Africa's climate has been changing for 21,000 years, from fantastic greenery to uninhabitable deserts. This has to do with Earth's rotation and the monsoons that bring water to this dry continent. But with the help of scientists and some clever tricks, we can bring the greenery back and stop the Sahara in its tracks. The Senegal River serves as a border between the Sahara Desert, Senegal City, and Mauritania. When you look at this area from space, you'll see how the desert is expanding to Senegal because the vegetation along the riverbank is almost non-existent. Forests can serve as a barrier, stopping the sand from getting blown away and the desert from expanding. An effort to create a great green wall is being made, and how they do it is actually quite impressive. Nothing has been growing in the currently restored area for more than 40 years, making locals find other places to call home. People were thrilled when they saw that the land could be restored. They're very committed and learn to work with the soil and grow food. At the same moment, more than 30,000 hectares have been restored and transformed into lush greenery. The Sahel region is the starting point of desertification, and it is crucial to establish a green wall in that area first. To make this wall is not rocket science, since it only takes a few simple steps. 
The ground there is baked by the sun and as hard as a block of concrete. If you've ever poured water on concrete, you know that it just flows away. It doesn't stay in one place. So they had to create water-retaining half-moons that would hold the water and make it available to plants. When you learn about how these half-moons work, you might say, how did they not think of that sooner? Actually, this technique is ancient, and it was once implemented in Sahel, but it was lost over time. When the rain falls, the water is collected into the half-moons that are positioned a bit lower than the ground below contour lines. There is also a kind of bank at the end of the shape that prevents water from overflowing. And in the middle, there are plants that are happy because they have plenty of water to thrive. Also, it's essential to grow native plants that are kind of used to harsh conditions, like sorghum and millet. These plants have been surviving there for thousands of years and produce a good amount of biomass, which means the land can be rehabilitated faster and people will have food sooner. The water that will enter the half-moons won't be lost. It will penetrate the ground and top off underground waters. This will ensure the ground that H2O will never run out and that future generations will have usable aqua. This brilliant planting technique is not limited to half-moons. People also create lines and plant various vegetables, such as tomatoes. Next, there are places only for trees, like lemons or oranges. After a long, hot day, nothing is better than a freshly made cold lemonade. The trees will also protect the soil, and with some luck, there will be a new forest in the Sahara Desert. The goal is to copy the forest dynamic. Start with small plants and gradually expand to bigger plants that are more useful than the tiny ones. They are aiming to plant more than 10,000 trees. Right now, many people are leaving the Sahara after the rainy season, going to cities or leaving Africa altogether. At this time of year, villages are like ghost towns. Only animals can be found there. Most people are gone. I mean, who would blame them? Nobody wants to live in the sand where nothing grows. Luckily, with all this new, old technology being developed, many people are slowly but surely returning to their land and starting to work in agriculture. The best thing is that there are no brutal winters, so plants grow 12 months a year, and people can always have food. People are becoming more social because now everybody stays in their villages and doesn't travel much. If this project works out, Africa will be saved and the world won't turn into a giant desert. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.